There is one reason you're feeling stressed and anxious about your PhD and that is risk. Risk. No one ever talks about risk when doing academic research, when doing your PhD. And the thing is, is that we don't teach people how to manage risk throughout their PhD and their careers. It's something that eventually you kind of just get a sixth sense for like, oh, I should try this, I should try that. But it's not good enough. When I was actually looking for frameworks to manage risk in academia, these are the sorts of things I came up with. We've got these sort of systems, which is, here, I'll click on this, which is kind of nice, but you know, what on earth does that mean? Then we've got all of these tables, we got that, that, and then also like from this, we got all of these things. And I was thinking, where is the simple framework or how can we make a simple framework that actually helps people make that first kind of understanding of risk? Now, risk is really important to manage manage because if you do loads of risky things then you're not going to end up with results that necessarily going to be easy to generate and also you're going to end up with a lot of failure but then if you do loads of the easy stuff you're not going to have that impact that everyone wants so how do you manage risk in a short-term three-month project well i've developed a framework and it's the beginnings of the framework so let me know if you would add anything to this i call it perfecting progress perfecting progress is about making sensible decisions about your risk now make no mistake that when you are starting a phd you you have to manage your risk like a hedge fund manager. There is no point sort of like doing all of the risky stuff unless you're hedging your bets with lower risk things. And also throughout a PhD, the times at which you need to do really, really risky stuff and really, really easy stuff changes depending on what year you are in. So this is what it looks like. And once again, this is a work in progress. So let me know if there's a risk management thing that you know of or that you would make improvements to this in some way. Let me know in the comments. So first of all, the thing that we need to come up with is ideas. Now, when we first come up with ideas, this first step is that we need to come up with all of the ideas we think that uh, will be useful for our PhD. In a PhD, you have normally an overarching sort of like project that you're trying to get to, but from a day-to-day -day level and a week-to-week -week and arguably month-to-month -month level, you have lots of sub-projects that get you to your end goal. The problem is, is that our time is a finite resource and we need to make sure it's placed in the right buckets because otherwise we run the risk of having a very, very risky project that will cause us anxiety because nothing's working, we've got lots of pressure, we've got the end in sight, but nothing will align for you. And the thing is, is that academic researchers and supervisors quite often give you ideas that are too risky for a PhD and haven't been hedged by lower risk activities. You'll see what I mean in a minute. The second part of this system is to identify the risks or the costs to that idea. So is there a financial aspect? Is there an ethical approval? Is there an access to equipment thing? Most of the problems that people come to me on this channel with are associated with access. It's either access to equipment, access to data, access to samples. That is a massive risk and something that people just assume will sort itself out. But this is a way of identifying them and the most uh, sort of damaging risks up front. And the last thing is, is a simple traffic light system. Red, yellow, and green. Red, meaning this is high risk. That doesn't, by the way, necessarily mean that you do not do it. In fact, it means that you do it early and we'll talk about that in a minute. Amber is sort of like, you know, there's some risk involved, but the impact to your research or your PhD is relatively high, so it's worth it in the middle. Um, and then the green one is low risk, but maybe not high reward. And so we'll work out this traffic light system so you know what the portfolio of research you're doing at the moment looks like. And I'd be really interested for you to try this on the research you're doing right now to let me know if you are over leveraged with risk in a certain way. So this is how it works in a sort of like practice practical sense is you set yourself up with a very simple table like this and you in the first column you have idea so you put your idea and then you say idea one idea two so you put them here you say like i don't know making carbon nanotubes with uh, different functionalities for something and then you go oh maybe here we need to do some silver nanowire um, functionality studies and then what about different composition whatever it is you put your ideas in this column and now this is where it gets really important is the second step is to think about the impact that would have in your field or on your phd so if you were to achieve that idea is it a slam dunk Oh, slam. Uh, I don't think I've ever played basketball. But um, 
Is it a slam dunk for your research idea? Will it just make your PhD? That is something worth pursuing if the risk is balanced nicely. And then we've got, um, you know, impact ranking one. Well, it's not really going to do anything, but it's going to be an easy amount of data to collect, but it's not really groundbreaking, but maybe it's sort of that catalyst that you need to start going. And then five is this makes my PhD. If I achieve this, it will be amazing. And it's something that I'm able to do um, right now. Uh, and then we look at risks. So let's go through the risks one at a time to talk about those. So the first one is data risk. Do you have access to the data that you need or have you got the ability to get the data easily? And I mean not having to go through anyone, not having to beg, not having to go through ethics committee approval. Have you got data? And then underneath here, we got minus one. So here we'll have an impact ranking. And if we have a data risk, we minus one off this number. So this will be a tick and then we do five minus one and then we do that for all of the risks until we end up with a score at the end and stay around because this will make more sense in a minute. Then experimental risk. Have you got access to all of the things you need to do on a day-to-day -day level? Do you have the right access to the tools? And right access, I mean free access. Like are you trained up on a particular instrument? It's not that you just have it nearby. It's have you got easy available access to it. The risk for this is relatively high because it's a lot of people, especially in the sciences where I was, you need access to equipment. So if you don't have access to equipment, you can't generate data and you can't pursue a PhD at all. Uh, personnel risk. Do you have access to the right people? So your supervisor, are they a flight risk? <laughs> have you got access to the right knowledge? So if not, these are things that we can sort of like work around by thinking about these risks, but if you don't have access to the right knowledge or the right people or the right admin staff even to help you progress with your PhD, that is a minus one. Burr, burr. Financial risk. With this study, is there a huge monetary cost that you won't be able to get hold of? I.e., you know, you need to buy a really expensive bit of equipment, you don't have it, or it costs a lot of money to do a certain study. Do you have the finances to do this idea? Remember, we're just talking about this idea here. Do you have the finances? Is it all set in stone? Has your supervisor got cash in the bank for that financial um, aspect of the study? If so, you don't have a financial risk, but you need to double check. And the last one is ethical risk. So is there an ethical risk? Have you got to fill out forms? Are you dealing with people, animals, uh, data, privacy acts, that sort of stuff? Is there an ethical barrier that you will face when you try to sort of like do this idea? And to be honest with you, those are the sort of like main five things that I think you need to consider when thinking about doing any research. And this is the thing about this framework is I've tried to make it as broadly applicable as possible possible, but it's a work in progress. I'd love to know what you think. So lastly, we give it a final score. Here we've got an impact ranking between one and five. And then for each risk, we minus one from that number. So then we end up with a final score. Idea one, I don't know whatever your idea one is. Um, it's got an impact ranking of four, which means yes, it's like it would make quite a significant contribution to my PhD or the field that I'm working in, but there's a lot of risks. So it's a minus one. Now, the thing is, is that this final score isn't about whether you do it or not necessarily, but about when you do it during your PhD. Stay tuned because we'll talk about that. Then this second idea, whatever it is, you know, it's kind of a medium uh, contribution, uh, but there's only one risk. So that gives us a two overall. And then this one is a three, but look, there's no risk. So actually, actually, this is a better idea to start with, so to speak, than this one here. Um, and that's how we do it but we can make it a little bit easier just by putting in a traffic light system. So you can set up very easily in Excel or whatever you're using to do conditional formatting to say if this number is between minus four and one, minus one, then uh, it's a red. Between zero and two, it's a yellow, and between three and five, it's green. Now, like I said, this is about managing risk and hedging bets, so it means that if something is a red, it doesn't mean don't do it at all. It means find the right time to do it and hedge it with the appropriate experiments so you're not just doing things that are incredibly risky and hard to achieve all the time. You have to intersperse it with um, yellows with green ideas. In fact, the green ideas are great because they just get your momentum and confidence up, but the red ones should only be attempted at a certain point in your PhD, and we'll talk about that now, because each year of your PhD, you're going to come up with a portfolio of ideas with varying risks. So 
What I mean by that is this. You can take on a load of red experiments. These are high risk but high reward potentially experiments. So we then need to make sure we got some yellow and just a little bit of green. These are the confidence builders. These are the ones that you'll almost certainly get good results from. And these are the Hail Mary shots that, uh, you know, maybe one in your first year, you try one or two ideas that if they worked, oh my God, it would be amazing, but we're not gonna dwell on the things that fail. We're just gonna try them and then leave them to the side and focus on the things that are working. And that takes us to the second year. So these green things are coming up because we've minimized risk or shown they're working. So each year we go back or every six months, you can go back here and have a look to see if any of the risks have changed. Because it may be that initially you had an experimental risk for this first idea, but now you don't anymore because you've proven something. Or maybe you've found someone that will help you. There's no personnel risk. That sort of stuff, um, you know, you need to go back and review. But nonetheless, um, yeah, in the second year, these green ones are some of the experiments that have actually worked and been brought over and then now they're green because they're shown their work there's no experimental risk anymore and it's about doubling down on that success but you still try some maybe just one of uh these really sort of hail mary ideas these are the things that actually keep research interesting now one thing you'll notice overall is that as we progress through our phd the red ones decrease because with a phd the earlier on you try something risky the more time you have to make something work and you do that by managing risk and your risk portfolio of experiments so here most of our really dangerous but really kind of ex uh, fun ideas i guess really early on and then by the third and fourth year they really don't exist because we need confidence that we're actually going to finish our phd and we can't be trying these hail mary tactics so you're at the end of your phd and your supervisor comes to you with a red experiment, you can say, give that to another PhD student who's in their first or second year. This isn't for me, I'm finishing up. Too many times I've seen supervisors give really risky experiments that's just a time sink to successful PhD students that are in their later years because they think they'll be better suited. No. They should give it to earlier stage so they have time to fail. It's not the time a fourth year student to be doing anything super dangerous. They need to be thinking about completing. And so that's why here we've got loads of experiments that have either been brought forward because they've proved themselves or we've failed for a number of years and we just need some data to write about on our PhD. It's not gonna be the best PhD, but it's gonna be a PhD. And we need to make sure that the ideas aren't incredibly risky and that we're mainly doing stuff with low risk stuff. And then if you're in your final year, fifth year, this is where you should really start thinking about only doing the things that produce results. How can you double down on the success you've had in the past to produce tables, graphs, schematics, diagrams of um, original ideas and data that will contribute to your PhD. That's how you do it. And uh, that is the framework that uh, I think everyone should be using that's simple enough to understand, but is applicable to a wide range of fields and um, will help you get a first grasp. So I'm not saying this is like completely conclusive or completely sort of uh, predictive of any success for your PhD. But if you start to think about ideas, not as ideas, but as um, associated risks and risks that you are willing to take on as you know compared to outcomes and then if you've got a really risky project you need to make sure you leverage you hedge that risk with lower risk things and the more you go through your PhD the more high risk things reduce and the easy things that will get you data will increase um, and that's how we manage risk throughout a PhD oh my god let me know what you think if you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about the secret formula for success of your PhD. I think you'll love it.